And let me be the first to tell you good afternoon. Welcome to the monthly regional connector uh, construction update meeting. We'll get started in a brief moment. Before we get too far into the morning, did wanna go through a couple of housekeeping items. You'll notice that uh, a bunch of us do have our computer, our cameras on so you can see us. That was um, in response to a, a feedback, the feedback that we received during the last two uh, webinars. So we appreciate the, the comments and we are working to incorporate more and more of those comments. So keep them coming. So, so we will get started, as I mentioned. Uh, you'll be able to submit questions uh, through that Q&A feature. Also, if you're joining by computer, you can raise your hand to join a queue um, and we'll unmute you for that moment. Um, I am aware that the presentation today will not take an hour. There's, uh, we're looking at approximately 30 minutes. So please do submit your questions um, as they come up and we'll be answering them. We'll also be taking breaks when we do a speaker switch to answer questions as they are posted. Um, if you're joining by phone today, please know that um, you can hit star nine to raise your hand and join the queue. Um, and when your number, your number is called, you'll press star six. You'll press star six to unmute yourself. So very excited that you guys are here. I'm uh, even more excited to hand this off to, I believe, Abraham. So again, thank you for joining us today. And Abraham, let's go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Jenny. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abraham Hurado, and I am a construction relations officer for the Regional Connector Transit Project. Uh, while I do focus mostly on the Flower Street financial aid, uh, finan financial district of the project, I also oversee the Eat Shop Play campaign for the entire project project alignment. Next slide. Uh, first, I would like to thank you all for joining us, and I'd like to go over a quick agenda for today's presentation. We'll, of course, take care of some introductions, have a quick overview of the Community Leadership Council, then I'll give a brief project overview before providing, providing my eShop Play updates. Uh, then I'll pass things over to my colleagues, JC and Wendy, who will provide construction updates and give us an idea of what to expect from the project in the near future. Now let's get started. Next slide. with some introductions. Next slide. Thank you. Um, from the project management side, we have Gary Baker and Sai Morales, as well as the head engineers of each section of the project alignment, Rajni Patel, Tung Vu, J.D. Pence, and Mike Halsey. Over on the community relations side, we've got Olga Arroyo, Jean Marie Hans, myself, Abraham Jurado, uh, J.C. Montenegro, Wendy Cardona, and Jenny Bordeaux. Joining us from the Regional Connector Constructors today is Justin Wagesback, the project executives, and Phil Mateo, the design manager. Next slide. Uh, now, before we get into the project overview, I would like to pass it over to Jean Marie Hans, who can introduce our friends in the Community Leadership Council. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jean Marie Hans. I'm with Community Relations and I work with the Community Leadership Council. I wanna take a moment to recognize the ongoing contribution and commitment Leadership Council. You see their names here. This nine member leadership group was formed in 2014 to promote the needs and preferences of area stakeholders in meetings just like these. While the contractor builds working at the direction of Metro's management, the construction relations team, headed by Olga Arroyo, works with a leadership council to take a close look at the nuances of, neighbor, of a neighborhood, to consider and address impacts, and to work with the team to sustain its daily routines. And this may be through design of eye-catching directional signage in tandem to a flagger's more traditional efforts or it could be the use of technology like Waze, alerting drivers on their way to alternative routes uh, as they make their way through, through the city to work. 
The Community Leadership Council, you may know, was formed as well to provide a sharing of information between Metro and communities that could provide opportunities to leverage this billion dollar public transit investment towards economic purposes. And as an example, in 2014, the Second and Hope Committee, working with downtown lead leaders advocated to Metro's board, a vision for a pedestrian bridge for what would become the future Grand Avenue Arts Bunker Hill Station. And this bridge would offer thousands of visitors and the area's workforce a direct connection from the station to the cultural, educational, and business anchors of Upper Grand. The board approved the addition, and I'm excited to report that the construction team is building it as we speak. I point to this as an example of the importance of the partnership, and but also more importantly, to denote our appreciation of the Community Leadership Council and their significant contribution at each of the station areas. And today we hope, as with any in-person in meeting, that we'll hear from them. Abraham, returning to you. Thank you very much, Jean Marie. Next slide. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the Regional Connector Transit Project is a 1.9 mile underground light rail system. It is uh, going to connect the Metro L line to the A and E lines, providing a one seat ride between Azusa and Long Beach and East LA and Santa Monica. Uh, there will be three new underground stations, including a replacement for the former Little Tokyo Arts District station, the historic Broadway station, and a Grand Ave Arts Bunker Hill station. Uh, about 90,000 daily passengers are expected once this uh, project is open for revenue service in 2022. Next slide. Here we have an illustration of the project alignment that shows just how these three stations will connect the L to the A and E lines, uh, providing a connection from 7th and Metro Center directly to Union Station via those new stations. Uh, next slide. And here we can actually see the uh, planned operational plan as approved in October 2020, showing that connection uh, between the L, A, and E lines, providing that one seat ride north to south from Azusa to Long Beach or east to west from East LA to Santa Monica. Next slide. And now, time for some Eat Shot Play updates. Next slide. <clears throat> Since our last update, we've continued to highlight businesses on social media to our thousands of followers, with some highlights like Farbar's Super Bowl meal deal, or reopenings like Cafe Demitas in Little Tokyo or Drago Centro on Flower Street. Uh, we want to make sure that our followers know all about our Eat Shop Play partners and what they have to offer. Next slide. Of course, we always want to take some time to highlight new Eat Shop Play partners. Now, this is actually a pretty significant new partner because technically they're an old partner. You can find a beautiful life Jamaican cafe's original location right by our future historic Broadway station and their new a beautiful life Jamaican kitchen location right by our future little Tokyo arts district station. Next slide. Uh, now, if you're a business owner near our project, uh, we'd love to invite you to our special webinar for each shop play businesses next month on March 12th. The Eat Shop Play team will be there to show examples of the upcoming marketing campaign and teach you how to tap into Eat Shop Play programming. Next slide. <clears throat> and as always, please give us a like, a follow, or subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date with our Eat Shop Play partners. Visit metro.net slash Eat Shop Play and click on DTLA or Little Tokyo, or follow us on Facebook at Metro Regional Connector or on Twitter at Metro Connector. Next slide. And now on to the project update. Next slide. <clears throat> Here we can see a general schedule of long-term activities for the project, which my colleagues will go into in greater detail. Wendy Cardona will take us through the closure at Temple and excavation of the First Street portal, as well as the upcoming weekend closures at Second and Broadway for deck removal and backfill activities. Then JC Montenegro will take us through pedestrian bridge construction, 
the deck removal activities anticipated on Hope Street and Flower Street later this year, and a few updates on civil improvements and trainway communication line work on Flower Street. With that, I will pass it over to Wendy, who will get us started with updates near the Little Tokyo Arts District Station. Thank you, Abraham. Hello, everyone. My name is Wendy Cardona. I am the Community Relations Officer for the Little Tokyo Arts District and Historic Station. And I will be providing an update for these two areas. Next slide, please. First, we have a rendering of the future Little Tokyo Arts District Station. This new station will be closer to the business district of Little Tokyo. You will see some of the civil improvements such as street lighting and light landscaping. The station entrance will be made out of glass with artwork incorporated within the interior and exterior of the station. Next slide, please. Here we have a rendering of the Alameda Street portal facing north. If you have been in the area, you will notice that the Little Tokyo Arts District station has been demolished to allow construction for the underground tunnel box along Alameda Street. Once regional connected construction is completed, improvements by the East Side Access Project will enhance the pedestrian and cyclist experience along Alameda. Next slide, please. Temple, our Temple Street closure is in place uh, and it is anticipated to be picked up this summer. The detour that's in place does allow for through traffic while local access is maintained for properties uh, east of Alameda. The northbound Alameda lane reduction will continue to be in place between First Street and Commercial. Uh, our team has continued coordination with emergency responders, local stakeholders, and Metro bus operation, as well as DASH. Next slide, please. Here, the photo to the left shows the current pedestrian route connecting Temple to Alameda on the south side of the intersection. The photo to the right shows um, the current setup of the closure on Temple Street. And if you have walked through the pedestrian route and peek in through the fence, you will notice that work is advancing and train tracks that were located on Temple Street have been removed. This, in this area is where, you, where the trains will rise up to grade level and travel north to Union Station. Next slide, please. One last activity that I would like to mention um, from this area is that uh, we will have a westbound lane reduction on First Street anticipated as early as March 29th, 2021 for approximately three months in order to continue excavation of First Street. We are maintaining through traffic in each direction of First Street between Alameda and Business. Pedestrian access is maintained on the south side as it is today. We, continue, we will continue coordination with adjacent stakeholders such as the Living Corridors, Faith-Based Institution, and businesses in the surrounding area, along with Metro Operations and DASH. In this area, bus service will not be affected during this work. Next slide, please. Now I will move on to the historic Broadway station. Next slide, please. The rendering shows a view of the station entrance from Broadway. In this rendering, you will see the entrance from the passengers that will be at the plaza level. As you know, most of our stations pay at the platform level. Here at the historic station and at, at all of our stations, you will see um, that passengers will pay at the entrance of the station. You will also see beautiful glass and landscaping features consistent with the look of the Little Tokyo Arts District Station. And now we will move on uh, to the current activities. Next slide, please. If you have followed our project pro progress at First in Alameda and First in Central, we have completed deck removal on the street. When we opened the streets, construction continued within the station limits, as that will be the case for historic Broadway Station. Taking a view below ground, the image to the right, uh, you will see um, that we are preparing for deck removal um, and also shows progress of backfill operations, which has been ongoing since last October. 
in this image, you will also see um, our contractor placing utilities from their uh, temporary position to their permanent position to allow uh, for crews to continue backfilling uh, to the roof level for the temporary roadways made out of deck panels. Um, also, the image to the right, you will see the progress of the station as concrete is being placed, waterproofing, rebar activities continue at the station as the station is taking place and we are transitioning to surface level activities. Next slide, please. We will have weekend closures uh, the next three weekends, the weekend of February 12th and 19th. The crews are focusing on backfill and deck removal at 2nd and Broadway intersections. The weekend of February 26th, our traffic crews will shift the set, set up from 2nd and Broadway to 2nd and Spring. Our contractor will, will reopen the northbound Broadway traffic lane while the 2nd Street will remain closed for backfill and deck removal operations through summer 2021. Outreach has been conducted to coordinate with adjacent stakeholders and businesses in the area. Next slide, please. During these weekend closures, we will have bus detours on Broadway. For bus detour information, please visit metro.net slash advisories uh, to see the most updated uh, detours for our buses. Now I'll pass it on to Jason Montenegro, who will present on Grand Ave Arts Bunker Hill Station and Flower Street Financial District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, now we're look, uh, taking a closer look at the future Grand Ave Arts Bunker Hill Station located at Second and Hope. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the deepest station on the project at over 110 feet deep. The future station will feature a pedestrian bridge connecting transit riders to Grand Avenue. Uh, here's a rendering of an aerial view of the station. High-speed elevators accessible by both the plaza level and from the pedestrian bridge will take travelers down to the concourse level of the station for county-wide travel. Next slide, please. Here's another view of a rendering of the pedestrian bridge from, the, from, from Hope Street and GTK Way. We will review upcoming work in this area as we continue bridge construction and upcoming deck removal work. Our crew started construction for the pedestrian bridge early in the year and will continue along with the station construction. Uh, activities with the, within the station include rebar, concrete, track work deep below at the track level and ongoing installation of station infrastructure continues. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a great view of the future bridge that will add an enhanced pedestrian ex uh, experience and access to the cultural, uh, educational, and business institutions along Grand Avenue. Next slide, please. This is what you'll see now if you visit the area on Hope Street. As you can see from this image, the support work for the bridge is well underway. Bridge construction will continue with pedestrian, pedestrian access in place on the east side of Hope Street between GTK Way and Second Place. Uh, through traffic on Hope is also maintained during this setup. Um, as early as mid-March, crews will also begin deck removal of deck beams lining Hope Street uh, between GTK Way and Second Street. This is the area uh, just below the bridge. Um, this, this will allow for backfill, permanent placement of utilities on Hope Street and also paving of the street. Next slide, please. As mentioned, an, an extended closure of Hope Street is anticipated as early as mid-March for approximately three months to remove the deck beams along Hope Street, conduct uh, permanent placement of the utilities and backfill. Uh, the image shows us what the setup will look like with the closure on Hope Street between 2nd Street and 3rd Street. Next slide, please. Moving on to the uh, Flower Street Financial District area, I would also like to reintroduce myself once again to the stakeholders along Flower Street, as I will be leading the outreach efforts for upcoming activities in 2021. I previously worked on Flower Street at the start of pile and deck installation and the six street closure phase of the project and look forward to working with you as we proceed with deck removal later this year. 
Next slide, please. Uh, current activities uh, down below ground at the uh, Flower Street Tunnel Box. Uh, remember that the Flower Street Tunnel Box runs from 3rd Street all the way to our tie-in point at 7th and Metro Center. A lot of the current activities include uh, installation of track and steel removal as uh, we continue also backfill operations um, as we prepare for deck removal. Next slide, please. Along with the steel removal and backfill operations, the contractor will also like to plan installation of some of the sidewalks along Flower Street with, with a sidewalk curb and gutter and accessibility ramp improvements along the intersection starting from 4th Street and Flower Street. As you can see from the sample image, it shows a before and after of an of a ADA ramp installation. Uh, this activity will require temporary sidewalk restrictions with pedestrian detours in place. Uh, we will provide more updates on locations and work hours once the work is scheduled and continue coordination with those adjacent area stakeholders along Flower Street. Next slide, please. Uh, another activity uh, at, at the surface level at the moment is the uh, installation of a trainway communication line that will connect the regional connector to the 7th and Metro Center. Uh, this week, we are finishing up uh, a lane reduction on Flower Street between 6th Street and 7th Street. Next week, uh, starting as early as Monday morning, uh, our, look, our work area is on the west side of 7th, on, on 7th Street between Flower Street and Figueroa. Uh, the work hours there will be 6 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and some possible night work 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Monday through Friday only. Next slide, please. The next major activity at uh, Flower Street includes uh, weekend closures for deck removal anticipated as early as uh, March 5th, 2021. Approximately 16 weekend closures taking us through July 2021. Uh, traffic control begins Friday evening at 7 p.m. as work continues through the weekend to open up by 5 a.m. Monday morning. Uh, starting from 4th Street to the tie-in point at 7th and Metro Center, crews will remove the large and heavy steel, steel deck beams lining the street, place utilities that are hanging from those decks, and, and, and place them in their permanent location while backfill and paving uh, will, will begin to restore the roadway. Deck, deck removal will continue south of 5th Street uh, after that July timeframe with similar weekend closures in place. Next slide, please. Here is a sample detour map that we, uh, we will be using uh, showing the, uh, the alternate routes during this, the, the work uh, along uh, Flower Street. Again, some of these deck beams um, are, are, are take some time to, to do it expeditiously and safely as our crews have done so before, as mentioned earlier, on First and Alameda and on Central Avenue, uh, removing those large heavy deck beams, uh, backfilling, placing utilities and restoring the street uh, takes, takes place. Uh, so we will have these maps available sh uh, shortly and, and distribute them out to our stakeholders so that they have the alternate routes during each weekend setup. Um, next slide, please. As always, again, our, 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 we have our dedicated construction relations officers uh, for each area to assist uh, with, with outreach. Uh, we do uh, uh, provide our construction notices ahead, ahead of, of any scheduled activity. Uh, we provide our uh, briefings with our stakeholders and prepare them for any of the upcoming activities along with our social media uh, website and uh, ways map integration that, that will be ongoing throughout the duration of the project. Next slide, please. That is all for our updates. We will open it up for questions and public comments. We do have one question from the chat. I will encourage folks to please use, oh, good. Uh, and there's another one. Uh, encourage folks to use the Q&A. Uh, Miguel has noted, and uh, he's curious if the pandemic has allowed for work crews to work additional hours due to the reduced vehicle and pedestrian traffic. And if there's any thoughts on ramping up the work schedule in order to be ready to maximize the routes when society starts to open up. Yes, I can take on this question. This is JC here. Um, again, the the uh, I, I believe the the pandemic has also you know affected like like most most industries has affected um, our areas and our work as well. We're doing our best 
to schedule out work and, and take advantage of some of those low traffic volumes where we can. Um, but but it, it, it also uh, has an effect on, on, our, on our crews and, and we're trying our best to schedule that out accordingly. Uh, we are monitoring as as um, things begin to open up again, uh, but we're definitely taking that into consideration as we proceed with the work and advance in in the different areas that we're at, especially uh, areas that are we are at surface level uh, activities. Okay, we've got two more questions coming in. What is the timing of the opening of the stations, or is it not known yet? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, the timing again. Our our hope is to complete our our or begin uh, testing uh, in 2022. There is no no uh, set date yet, as um, as testing will take approximately five months. Uh, so our goal is to continue uh, uh, or uh, plan for revenue operations between after summer and at around fall uh, is the is the best we can say. Um, but again, the construction is dynamic and, and we're, we're uh, basing that on, on our progress as we go. Great, all right. So I do see hands up in the room and I see that there are approximately four different Jean Marie Hanses in the room. I'm going to allow the one that's got their hand up to talk. So prepare yourself, here we go. Okay. Jean Marie Hans with the ADLA icon. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Go ahead. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, I just want, no, not really a question, just a comment. You know, every time uh, we have these meetings and you give the presentation, I'm, I'm, I am and probably everybody else here is reminded about how complicated and complex of a project this is. So we very much appreciate uh, the work you guys are doing, uh, the, the length of time it's taking. And then also we just appreciate, or at least I do, I appreciate the constant communication you're having with the community, keeping us updated because people are curious and people do get stuck in the traffic and they wonder what the heck's going on here. But it's really not until you understand the depth of what is happening underground that you appreciate all the work that's, that's being done. So thank you very much for the uh, uh, constant uh, reminders and presentations. So can I ask you a favor? Because you're yes. popping up as Jean Marie Hans, would you like to say what your name is? Oh, uh, Miguel Vargas from the Arts District. <laughs> Thanks, Miguel. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm looking, I'm not seeing any more questions in the Q&A box. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and lower Miguel's hand. Are there any other questions from the audience? Because if not, guys, we're going to go ahead and call it a meeting. Olga, did you want to provide any closing words? I did. I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge Abraham Hudado of my team. He's been part of the Regional Connector for the last three years and part of Metro for five years. And unfortunately, uh, Abraham is moving on and I just wanted to acknowledge him for all his work and dedication in supporting regional connector, supporting local businesses within the regional connector alignment uh, and just his motivation to keep supporting uh, small businesses through his efforts. Uh, so thank you, Abraham, you will be missed and we appreciate everything that you have done for both programs. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Uh... Rest assured, I will definitely be back in town to take one of those first rides on the Regional Connector. We've got time for uh, Richard has his hand up. Do you mind? I'm going to go ahead and Richard, I'm going to unmute you. All right. You can unmute yourself, Richard, and go ahead and say. Talk. Thank you. Uh, I've been following these meetings. Uh, I don't live in LA, but I'm very in transit and I use the system when I'm in LA. I do not drive. It's a wonderful system, getting better every year. I appreciate all this work. I just brought up a downtown map of Los Angeles City while we were talking, and I ran my cursor over the 7th Street Station and popped up on the map the blue line, uh, the purple line, the red line, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, line that goes to uh, Santa Monica. 
And I'm wondering in the future when I post my cursor over what other lines is it going to give me at the Seven Street Station? Do you understand my question? Hi, Richard. Uh, we thank you so much for for being a, a loyal supporter of uh, trans transportation, especially of LA, uh, given that you're not in the area. And so all the lines that you mentioned will continue to operate uh, out of the 7th and Metro Center station. A regional connector will be integrated into the Blue and Expo lines. And so when we open in 2022, uh, we are transitioning into a letter name convention and regional connector will be absorbed into the blue line, the expo lines. Trying to click all these buttons at the same time. Uh, apologies. All right. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out the meeting for, for today. Uh, I did record it, so we'll be sending out the recording as soon as possible. We'll send out the PowerPoint uh, in a couple of hours. And thank you all for this afternoon. Abraham, we will miss you very much. But don't worry, each shop place still exists. Probably not as fancy as Abraham, but we will do our best. So, all right, with that, folks. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you.